Welcome to Electromagnetism Lesson Number 10 Practical Demo. Dr. Ken with you here again. So let's get underway. So we're looking at the principles of DC machines and in motors in particular. So this time we're investigating the variation of the supply voltage to motor speed and also we're going to look at the variation of the field motor current to the speed of a motor as well. So again, with all these things, we do our little risk assessment, our WHS. Electric shock, we're keeping to a minimum by using only ELV, that's voltages under 50 volts. Burns, got to be careful because my field motor gets, the field winding gets quite warm. And then trips and falls, etc. Making sure we keep leads neat and away from where we might trip over them. Here's the basic construction of a motor. A DC motor. My motors are a little bit different to this because my motor doesn't have two poles. It sorry, it doesn't have four poles. It only has two. So my motor looks like this right-hand one, except for the poles on the left and the right. I've got um, some frame brackets which uh, hold the bearings, which look very similar to this on either side. Just a, a bracket that holds the bearings down to a base. I've got a shaft that runs between those and of course on that shaft I have an armature and you can see the armature kind of running through here on the drawing. There's a commutator and I also have some brushes to my commutator. The outside of my motor is a little bit different. My field, my field, the outside bracket actually extends up this way. And on the top, I've got a field coil. It's just an electromagnetic coil here that simply provides the magnetic field for the north and south poles. So here's my general setup. I've got a base, I've got uh, my frame and stator which creates effectively my field, giving me field across here when I put my field winding into the top of here. I've got brackets at either end which will hold my shaft and my armature and here's my shaft and my armature with the shaft through it, commutator and the armature itself. Also, I've got a couple of steel nickel plated brushes, which bring current to and from the commutator. So let's put this together just quickly to give you some idea of how the DC motor goes together. So first bracket is in place with the, then put the motor frame in place, then put the armature inside and put the other bracket in place. Then finally, we put the um, brushes on, making contact with the armature. And then finally, we put the field winding into the top, which is gonna create the magnetic field across our armature. So there's the complete thing. I've just turned it around at a couple of degrees so you can easily see the edges of it and how it all fits together. So here's my circuit diagram. Basically, I have a DC motor and I'm going to be able to connect it both in series and in shunt. I've only drawn it really here in, uh, in shunt and you'll notice I don't have a field rear stat. I'm going to use a separate part of my DC supply to operate my field when I need to do that. So we're going to both have this circuit done as in shunt and then we're going to change the circuit a little bit and I'm going to, oops, go back one. I'm also going to do 
a shunt where I eliminate this altogether and I end up putting my field in here and then we're going to look at the different characteristics so I've got a DC motor armature the measurement of my voltages and my currents are mostly going to be via the meters on the front of my DC power supply but at one place where I'd need to specially meter measure the current to the armature I do use a separate ammeter but I'll show you that as we go along then for attack ometer um, I have simply put a wheel on the shaft so I have the shaft coming out of my motor and there's a wheel on that and on the top and bottom of the wheel I've put little magnets so simply put two little magnets that rotate round and then I've put a thing called a reed switch on the bottom here and I've fed that to one of my meters that has frequency has frequency and I simply measure the frequency of the magnet spinning around to represent speed or RPM so that's called a reed switch and my magnets just operate the reed switch as it spins around and tells me the speed just a short form non-contact tachometer so here's the actual first circuit so here's our DC motor setup so here we have the motor supply here and here we have the field supply so this is a dual power supply that I can operate independently so I've got one supply coming down here to the brushes and operating the motor and this supply up here to the field operating the field I've got a my rotating magnets here and my little switch and my switch goes to some circuitry over here and comes back to my multimeter which is operating as a tachometer and if you can see carefully I've got that set to frequency so we're simply looking at the frequency of how often the switch opens and closes to be our tachometer so I'm able to do lots and lots of different things as we go around using this basic operational model so let's get it up and running and do some experimenting so the first thing I've done here is I've got the armature current at 196 milliamps or 1.9 amps my armature voltage is 6.9 my field is 2530 milliamps or two and a half amps and my field voltage is 8.5 and you can see very clearly my speed is 484 so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the armature current you'll notice that the field current over here the field current field current hasn't changed very much the voltage certainly hasn't changed and the amount of interacting current here not much change but I've changed the voltage here quite considerably and taken it down which has it also reduced the armature current and what can you see has happened to the speed the speed is clearly dropped our speed has dropped down so our field has stayed the same but I've varied the voltage to the armature and my armature has slowed down considerably next I do it again just just to make the point we've now reduced the voltage across the armature a little bit more voltage across the field constant 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 
and the current has only changed it, it's still around two and a half odd amps. Now let's look at the speed. The speed has dropped now down to from 480 to 296 and now it's dropped again to 161. So there's clearly a relationship between the armature current and voltage and speed. Whoops, gone a bit fast there. So what I've done now is I've gone the other way and with this particular motor, shunt motor, we've got a speed now of 324 holding the armature voltage at 5 volts giving us 1.58 but I've increased the field the field is now 2960 milliamps at 12 volts so we've increased this for now our speed is 300 and our armature voltage at 5 volts so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the armature voltage at the same volts. No change. Our reactive current has gone up a little bit, but not a great deal of change. I've changed the voltage at the field quite considerably. I've now brought it down from 12 volts to 5.1. I've halved pretty well the voltage and I've reduced the current in the armature considerably and that's had a corresponding effect to the speed so my speed has also come down to 205 so let's get rid of those so you can see in the first little experiment we varied the armature voltage and current. In the second experiment we varied the field voltage and current. Both will affect the speed of the machine. But armature you can get much much finer control. So we got much better control over speed by controlling armature current rather than controlling field current. So what are our observations? We want to investigate the variation of speed and voltage to the motor, for the motor speed. As the supply voltage reduces, the armature field gets weaker and the push-pull between the armature and the field, magnetic fields reduce, resulting in a slower or a slowing of the speed. The exact reverse if the voltage is increased. So if you increase the field, you will increase the speed. Second observation, to investigate the variation of the field current. With the armature field held stable, if the field strength is reduced, the motor again slows as the two field interactions become weaker. But you don't get as nice a speed control than if you can control the armature. But the field often is much easier to get at, therefore easier to control. So I hope you've enjoyed our little experiment in motor speed control. There's a couple of ways you can do it, and uh, that was just two. You can vary the current in the armature, or you can vary the current in the field.